Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My, my name is Imam Hassan Amin. I am the founder and also executive director of Muslim Social Services Agency based really here in Baltimore City. Uh, we're going to talk about building a winning coalition. I'm going to be using various words. I'm going to use coalition. I'm going to use uh, also alliance, also collaboration. So I'm going to interchange with those, um, those three words. Muslim Social Services Agency, we've been around for 15 years. We are a 501c3 organization, tax and organization. And what we do is, is that we connect the poor, the ones who are low income and the homeless to resources and services that will help them to improve upon the quality of their life. And it's free of charge. Although it says Muslim Social Services Agency, 90% of the people that we serve and we help are now Muslims. The other 10% are more or less are, are Muslim. Alhamdulillah. As it should be. Uh, alhamdulillah, as it should be, he said. In case you didn't hear him. Um, I'm just going to talk from experience. When you're talking about building, a, uh, when you talk about building an alliance or collaboration with others, because I think experience is the best teacher more than reading from a book. And is a, what's in the book, you might read it, but then again, you may practice it another kind of way. I'm going to tell you what we've gone through over the years. But let me say this first. And that is, I want to, when you talk about collaboration, I want to talk about a group that the Prophet ﷺ, he loved. And this was the Hifa al Fadul um, Confederacy. And what it was after the wars in the, uh, in the amongst the tribes uh, during, during the time of the Prophet Salam, and they sort of calmed down a little bit, they formed this group. And I, and I may have all the story, not, not exactly what it says in books, but I'm just trying to paraphrase it on, on because of time. And so you had different tribes form this particular group, al al Fadul. A confederacy. And basically what they did, it was they were, when people were, they, they suppressed violence and injustice and also vindicating the rights of the weak and those people who were destitute. So they defend, basically they were there to help those people who are, who are in need that need someone to help to defend them. Mathel, for, for example, there was a man, he did some work for, for another man. And we know the Prophet Salam, he said that, that you pay a man before the sweat dries on his bra, on his face. And so what happened is that the man would not pay him after he did the work. And so he went to the man that, that did the work with the different people and he said, look, I got this problem. Help me with this problem. The man won't pay me. And so no one would listen to him. They told him to turn the blind eye and turn it back to him. And so he got frustrated. So he went to a mountaintop where all the people were, were located, particularly the leaders around, around, uh, around a Mecca uh, at the time. And so what he did, he sort of ripped his shirt off and he said the same thing over and over again. Help me, help me. I work for this guy and he did not pay me. Who's going to help me? And so this particular group that I mentioned, they went to the man's uh, the, the, uh, defense. So they approached the man that he did the work for him and they persuaded him to pay the man for what, what, he, owed, what he owed to him. So when you talk about collaboration, you talk about you all basically had the same mind, uh, mind, mind thought working together towards, a, towards an end to accomplish, to accomplish something. We know that the Prophet Sallallahu we talk about social justice and, you, and you're talking about like-mindedness. The first hijra that the Muslim made from Mecca was to an African country, which was Abyssinia. Because there was a fair, a fair and just ruler there. And when they went there, the man was exactly that. He heard their side of the story. He heard also those who pursued him were from the Quraysh, their side of the story. And he said, okay, I like what you said about Miriam. I like what you say about Esau. You are safe in my, in my country. So you want to team up with Muslim or Christian. You want to team up with those individuals that can help you to accomplish your goal as the Prophet Salaam did when he said, okay, you leave here. He didn't tell him, go anywhere else, you go to this place where this king, where this king was, was located. So that's one of the foundations of us, of my organization. One of the foundations of the organization come from ayah uh, from Quran, where Allah said, what is it? He said, wa atasimu lhabbillahi jami'un wa la tafarraku. We said, it means that, and hold fast all together to the rope of Allah. And la la tafarraku. Do not divide amongst yourself. 
And so, alhamdulillah, what we mainly do in my organization, we try to collaborate and align ourselves with Muslim organizations because we want to make them strong and we also in turn want, want to be strong. So you can look at, for example, what do you want to accomplish? So you look at those organizations that can help you accomplish whatever you, whatever you want to accomplish. Those are organizations that, that, that we focus on when we are talking about building collaboration and can build a capacity uh, with, with our particular org organization. We also form a steering committee, and that steering committee looks for people who can help us to grow, and we, can, and we can in turn help them to grow. For example, when we wanted to do some things in, 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 the, in the area of social justice and law, so we looked to CARE, which is the Council on American Islamic Relations. So we teamed up and partnered with them, and they could, we deal with a lot of refugees, and we help a lot of Syrian refugees. And so we teamed up with them, and they helped us to be able to help our refugees that we teamed up, uh, that we teamed up with. Also, we wanted more people and more students to be involved in helping us to help others. And so we went to here in Baltimore City, it's Islamic Community School, and also Johns Hopkins University. So we got the Islamic Community School, they had, school, they had, they had students from grade 1 to grade 12. And then you call Johns Hopkins University, they go all the way from, uh, all the way from, from, from uh, sophomore up to seniors and, and beyond. And so we team up with them and got volunteers for those organizations, for those two schools that help us to be able to help the homeless and help the seniors and help others. When we talked about more financial help, we went to IRU, IRUSA, which is Islamic Relief United, uh, 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 USA, and we, and we asked them for money because we wanted to give some more better services to the refugees that we've been dealing with. And so they gave us a grant, alhamdulillah, to be able to help, this, help the, the, the refugees and also hire a person part-time to be what we call the case manager for the refugees. We went to Mercy USA and we, and we asked them, alhamdulillah, for some money so we could have a full-time person that's going full-time refugee case manager. And alhamdulillah, they gave us some money to be, able to, to be able to do that. And so if you have a goal in mind, then you have to look around for those that are going to help you to be able to, to get to the goal that you have in mind. When we need some other financial help, we look to ISB, Islamic, uh, Islamic Society of Baltimore, and also Dal Tukwa, located here in Baltimore metropolitan area. We look to them for, for financial help, and alhamdulillah, they came to our rescue to give us the money we needed in order to be able to help other people, refugees, and also non-refugees, and Muslims, also, also non-Muslims. So I just want to mention those few things to you. Now, that's for us going out to give a bigger capacity. Now we can also hook up or, or align ourselves with individuals that just want to help mankind in, in just, just in general. And I'd be very remiss if I did not mention, maybe, maybe Sister Linda probably needs to leave the room, but I'm going to talk about her. And that what I'm going to talk about, Sister Linda, is the fact that she's a, a definitely a, a real life example of a person that knows how to do alliances. Because she did a great job, and she's not paying me, right? Maybe. Maybe we'll see what I got to say, right? Okay. And, and so she did a great job, alhamdulillah. She and the other three ladies, I call them the force for me, a force to be reckoned with. Four, four ladies were able to, alhamdulillah, organize last year, 2017, this, this, org, this what you call, I think it was more so uh, the Women's Social Justice or something like that for Women's March. And I probably am not saying it wrong, but she'll straighten me out later on. And so what it is is that, alhamdulillah, it wasn't just local, it wasn't just national, and I don't know what the intent was. It went global. Women from all over the world, alhamdulillah, standing up for the rights of women. And so she coordinated that, not just with Muslims, with anyone that wanted to step forward and wanted to be about the rights of women and looking out for the rights of women. And so I applaud her because alhamdulillah, she's a shining example of what, of what we're talking about here. We're talking about collaboration and talking about alliances. I want to move on. Alhamdulillah. And I want to also uh, move on with Reverend Al Sharpton, a Christian uh, minister. When he did a thousand, he did a thousand ministers march in D.C. Uh, late, uh, late last year. Alhamdulillah, I was part of that. 
We, it, it wasn't a thousand of us ministers. It was about three to five thousand of us, us down in D.C. And we marched from the monument where you had the Martin Luther King statue up to, up to the Hall of Justice or to the uh, Department of Justice. About a mile and a half or two miles or so that we marched and then we rallied there. And so we can team up with others that have like mindedness minded, like, like ourselves. And that's Muslim or non-Muslim like the prophet did. The first hit they made was where? They went to an African country. And they went to a non-Muslim, which was a, which was the, which was a Christian, uh, which was a Christian leader. When inshallah we had uh, here in Baltimore City, we had a march for, for awareness of HIV AIDS. And alhamdulillah, I was in the faith, and I became, I was part of that at that particular organ, uh, organization. And I want to mention something else. About three years ago, when Baltimore was on the national news, international news, when we had the riots here in Baltimore, I was part of that. No, I was not throwing rocks in the riot. No, that's not that was not the case. What I said I was part of it is that I was listening to was listening to the news, watching the watching Baltimore City burn and watching them riot and loot. And so I, and I'm thinking as as Imam and Muslim, and I'm saying, wait a minute now, they're burning down my town. What can I do as a Muslim? I didn't know of any any not any Muslim brothers that were coming together, or Imams or any they coming together to do something about it. But I did hear did hear about a group of Christians and they rallied together and they and they link arms together and and then I caught up with them. And I linked arms with them, and we have a council man, a man with us. And we linked up, and we walked through the, about 50 strong, walked through the belly of the beast. People were still looted. People were still robbing. People were still burning up Baltimore. And we were walking through the streets of Baltimore because we we're telling the people to stop the rioting and stop burning up Baltimore City. We were humbled out. We were successful in doing that. We went out there 50 strong, and by the time we back, got back to the church where Freddie Gray was eulogized, we had two of the people with us. We have picked up another 150 people. Even some gay members joined us because they had a truce. The black gorilla family, the, the Bloods and the Crips are joined us because they were lo no longer fighting each other because now they had a, a, a new enemy and the enemy was, was the police. And so we, brothers and sisters, we can team up with other people outside of our faith. And that's what we, that's what we did, alhamdulillah, and that's what, and that's what I did. I want to mention, alhamdulillah, is that we have what's going on right now. What happened to the Muslim brother shot 20 times, I think six of them in his back, in California. And so now, by alhamdulillah, my organization, along with CARE and others, we're going to have a rally tomorrow at 12 o'clock, not far from here. Matter of fact, Sister Linda, I think, is one of, one of the speakers there. And we're going to rally, inshallah, regarding what, what happened to this brother. And so, inshallah, he was Muslim and he had, and he had, a, and he had a Janazah prayer, I would think, for four more on Thursday. And so, no, we have not stopped being involved and combining ourselves with those people who want to do more for, more for others. And so and it doesn't matter if they're Muslim or non-Muslim, our base is Muslim, but we go outside, outside of our base. So I want to mention one more thing, and then inshallah I will, I will stop and let Sister Linda come up. Whenever brothers and sisters, when we collaborate or do interfaith things, just be careful that you don't lose yourself. Don't lose your deen. Because the deen is lying, alhamdulillah, this is the deen that's going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No other deen will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except for Islam. And so what do I mean by not losing your Islam? What I mean by that is that sometimes in some of these groups, they may do something or say something that really kind of go against the grain of Islam. And you may have to tell them, I can't do that. If they want to say, okay, we all go take a drink of liquor or something like that before we begin, oh, I, we can't do that. We're not supposed to do it. I'll put it to you that way. If you didn't know you weren't supposed to do it, you're not supposed to do it. I'm telling you now. So, Lord, bear witness, I'm telling you we're not supposed to do that. Now, let me get to this point. There was a group, and maybe some of you were in there, I don't know, where they had Muslim, Christians, and Jews together, and they were doing sort of a, 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 a sort of an interfaith thing. But I think some way, one way along the line, they sung this, they sung this song. And the song was a 1971 release, and many of you were not born, I was there then. And it was John Lennon's song. It's a nice song, some parts of it, but some aspects of the song that really I'm a little uncomfortable with. And I'm going to just say, not sing, the, some, of the, some of the lyrics that I'm talking about that I was uncomfortable with. 
Okay? <laughs> Saying, I, I, you heard over here. Don't listen to her. Right now, don't listen to her. <laughs> and, and, and it's called Imagine. And it says, uh, Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine there's no countries. It's hard. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for and no, no religion to. So there are like three aspects of this I'm uncomfortable with. When they say, and hopefully you are too, when they say, imagine no heaven. When we know in this deed, there's a heaven. But we all are striving to get the Jannah. And also it mentioned about no hell below. Or wherever hell is, wherever law has, it, it is where it is. And so we know that hell exists, Jehennam exists. And also said, in no religion. And we know this deed is really important to us. Matter of fact, we, we, we go beyond saying it's our deed. We say it's our way of life. But religion is important to us. So those aspects of the soul, and it may be other parts, but I'm going to shorten this up. Some things we can't say, or we can't say because we don't believe in this kind of thing. So be careful and let people know it's a form of dawah. If you don't do something and they say, well, why you don't do that? Then you let them know, Dean Wise, I can't do this. I can't do this or do that or the other. And then that opens up the door for other conversation. Like for Mathel, like for me, when people come, they want to shake my hand, particularly females I'm not related to, and then I say, I can't, I can't touch you because the Hadith talks about uh, if the, before you touch a woman you're not related to, it's like you feel really what kind of this drill, this, this hot pipe or this lead or this iron uh, sort, sort of like nail into your head. You have to have that happen to you first. And so, I, and so I can't do that. Now, if I'm married to you, that's another story. I can touch you wherever I want to touch you. You're my wife. But otherwise, I can't lay my hands on you. And then that opens up the door alhamdulillah for, for, for giving dawah to them and let them know about Islam. And they give and, that's, and they respect that. So I respect the brothers and sisters of Islam. Please inshallah, if you're going to form a lake, when you want to form a group or something like that, or when we're talking about here, you want to build a coalition or alliance, inshallah, look for where you want to go and look for those that are going to help you to get where you want to get, inshallah. Thank you for listening. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.